Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Oh yes, I am the Lord that healeth thee, Miss Kathy. In thee, O oh Lord, do we put our trust. In you, O oh Lord, do we put our trust in you, O oh Lord? Do we put our trust? Good morning, Mel. On this September 2nd. Do you believe that? September 2nd. And that little scripture chorus was is, is from... Psalm 46, verse 10. You want to put little music notes beside that. Psalm 46, verse 10. I will probably burst into it when we get to read it again. All right. On this September 2nd, we have just begun the great and wonderful book of Ecclesiastes, which really means the preacher, the teacher. Ecclesia is Greek for church or congregation, a gathering, a gathering of believers. Good morning, Miss Lou Ann. And Joy says she has connection issues, but she's going to try again. Father God, give her a good connection. Hallelujah. And she does. Gotcha. All right. So Solomon here, I mean, he has everything. I mean, even he asked for wisdom and God said he'd give it to him more than anyone else has ever had or ever will had. Can you imagine that? I could go for some more wisdom. And here we have Miss Connie giving us a shalom, a shalom, perfect peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Hallelujah. So we are going to hear his musings because he's got all the money, all the wisdom, all the authority. He can do whatever he wants. He can build, plant, he can do whatever he wants. There is nothing out of his reach, okay? So let's see how that goes for him. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Yerushalayim, according to Ecclesiastes 1, 1. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. <laughs> this is coming from the richest guy on the earth. Got everything. Can do anything he wants. Good morning, Miss Sharon. Good to see my sister's face before me as I look at your name. We are in Ecclesiastes 1, verse 3, Miss Sharon. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place back again where it arose. The wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. My eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done 
is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new? It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the sons of men by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed, all is vanity and grasping for the wind. Good morning, Miss Melissa. And she has on there Kathy's graphics, which are just awesome, awesome. For all of this we are reading now. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. And here's a beautiful statement. Do you do this? I communed with my heart. I do that all the time. <laughs> I know you do too. I communed with my heart saying, look, I have attained greatness and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. We move along to chapter 2 of Ecclesiastes. Good morning, John. We are just to begin reading chapter 2 of Ecclesiastes, John. I said in my heart, Come now, I will test you with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. But surely this also was vanity. I said of laughter, madness. And of mirth, what does it accomplish? I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom. And those two don't go together very well, do they? And how to lay hold on folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. also my wisdom remained in me. And that's because God specifically answered that prayer for him, didn't he? Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my reward from all my labor. And then I looked on all the works that my hands had done and on the labor in which I had toiled. And indeed, 
all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. Then I turned myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do who succeeds the king? Only what he has already done. And then I saw that wisdom excels folly as light excels darkness. Good morning, Miss Maria. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I myself perceived that the same event happens to them all. So I said in my heart, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. And why was I then more wise? And then I said in my heart, well, this also is vanity. For there is no more remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever. Since all that now is will be forgotten in the days to come. How does a wise man die? As the fool. And therefore, I hated life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me for all is vanity and grasping for the wind. And then I hated all my labor in which I had toiled under the sun, because I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will rule over all my labor in which I toiled and in which I have shown myself wise under the sun. This also is vanity. Therefore, I turned my heart and despaired of all the labor in which I had toiled under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom, knowledge, and skill. Yet he must leave his heritage to a man who has not labored for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the sun? For all his days are sorrowful and his work burdensome. Even in the night, his heart takes no rest. This also is vanity. Nothing is better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. And this also I saw was from the hand of God. For who can eat and who can have enjoyment more than I? For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give it to him who is good before God. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones 
and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him that which has already been and what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Moreover, I saw under the sun, in the place of judgment, wickedness was there, and in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart, concerning the condition of the sons of men, God tests them, that they may see that they themselves are like animals. For what happens to the sons of men also happens to animals. One thing befalls them, as one dies, so dies the other. Surely they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over animals, for all is vanity. All go to one place. All are from the dust, and all return to dust. Who knows the spirit of the sons of men, which goes upward, and the spirit of the animal which goes down to the earth. So I perceived that nothing is better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his heritage. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? Wow. <laughs> Have you ever gone through all that process of thinking about stuff? <laughs> like King Solomon? We move right along to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Ch Corinthians chapter 6 on this September 2. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, 
Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And so we have gone from all of the reasonings of man that he can do in his own heart to Paul, who's putting forth what God would bring out spiritually for you and me. I mean, listen to those words. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. In much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings. Listen to this reasoning, right? I mean, you see this, the similarity and yet we see the difference. One is reasoning in the natural, one is reasoning in the spiritual. By purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold, we live as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Oh, Corinthians, oh, Americans, oh, people of every country in this generation, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us but you are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. And we will continue what Paul has to say tomorrow. Lord willing, Lord willing that we have a tomorrow. We don't know that yet, do we? We move right along to Psalm 46, wonderful song of Alamot, a psalm of the sons of Korah given to the chief musician. God is our refuge and, and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah, stop and meditate, stop and spend a minute in worship. There is a river whose streams shall make glad 
the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. She shall not be moved. No, she shall not be moved. Isn't that good to know? She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Oh, catch Kathy's graphics. She has a beauty on the earth melting. <laughs> the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, Jacob, is our refuge. Oh, isn't he our refuge from all the rigors of life? Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He makes wars cease. Got that? Who makes the wars cease? God does. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, Jacob, is our refuge. Selah. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, get this proverb that we're wrapping it up with. Proverbs 22, 15. If you are a troubled mother with little children, listen up. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. People say, well, what does God have to say about spanking? Well, you just heard it. A rod of correction. Not a beating, a correcting. There's a difference. Wow! <laughs> Woo! The mighty word of God. Precious Father, we gather together, closing out in prayer here. And we rejoice to be able to lift up our voices to you in prayer with thanksgiving. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing it alive for us, causing it to have meaning for our everyday life, causing meaning to be able to walk this day closely with you, making wise decisions, Staying away from foolishness. Staying away from deceit and falsehood. Walking along. Desiring to be like you. Oh, we desire to be like you, precious Jesus. Our ultimate, ultimate head. You are the head. We are part of your body. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our refuge in the day of trouble. We can hide in you. We can 
envelop ourselves in your presence. We can walk through this earth and yet not be a part, not be a part of any of the deceit, the foolishness, the base living that is only done by the flesh. Father, we thank you for Holy Spirit. Please help us. Our desire is to walk by the Spirit, Lord. Our desire, Holy Spirit, is for you to help us walk today in the Spirit, by the Spirit, for the Spirit, that Jesus might be glorified, that the kingdom of God might be built up, that souls might be saved through our testimony, through our prayers. Oh, we give you, we give you such grateful thankfulness, Lord. You took us out of the miry clay of a sinful life. And you put us on the wonderful path, the path of perfection, the path of of true worth of living. We, we are so grateful. We hold up Israel, Lord. We hold up Yerushalayim, this city, this city that is spoken of in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, in the Proverbs, your favorite place. We hold it up today, Lord. We are grateful to live in a time where it's not just wilderness like it has been for over 2,000 years. But we are blessed to see you cause it to come alive, to see you, Lord, bring your people home. Oh, what a joy. Please, Lord, help them. Help them as they arrive. Help them not to fear. Help them to be confident that they can learn Hebrew. They can put their hands and their minds to some kind of work to support, to help, to help build up the country. Oh, we bless you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for Bibi Netanyahu, this wise man you have put in the office, you have used him, Lord, in glorious, glorious ways. And we thank you for him, Lord. We thank you that he is a great friend of America. And we thank you, Lord, that America is Israel's best friend. We ask, Lord, that you constantly cause our leadership to recognize that, to have fear, actually, in their hearts and minds to ever, ever turn away from blessing Israel. You have blessed us that we might bless Israel at this time of her rebirth. Father God, I hold up America. I hold up President Donald J. Trump, this mighty man who's here and there and everywhere with inexhaustible strength and courage, looking here and there as to what is right for America. Thank you, Lord, for this heart that has come, turning down even a paycheck, giving it away, costing him money, costing his business to take a lot of hits from those who hate him. Lord, We'd ask that you'd strengthen him with your anointing every minute. Lord, we'd ask that you would guide him by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost, that he would know what is from you and what isn't. Even when it's hard to discern, give him, Lord, a spirit that discerns, a spirit who discerns who is faithful and who is not, who is loyal who will truly help him, and who is playing games, lying. I'd ask, Lord, that you would deal with those wicked people, 
bring them. Your word says some must be compelled to come. That's what I pray today, Lord. Compel those that you have marked to come into your kingdom. If they come kicking and screaming, like Paul, absolutely blinded and put down in the heat of the desert, in the hatred of his life, hatred of people, you took him, Lord, and you caused him to be born again, and you used him mightily for your kingdom. And he loved you and adored you rather than hated you. Lord, we know it's possible for people today. We'd ask, Lord, that you would bring many to their salvation who are lost. I mean, they're slipping on the proverbial banana peel into heaven, into hell. Excuse me. They're slipping on the banana peel into hell. Don't let it be today, Lord. But bring redemption to those whose hearts would allow to be softened and opened up unto you. Precious God, strengthen the saints. Strengthen your church and your believers, your sons and your daughters. Strengthen, Lord, leadership. Be with pastors and, and leaders and prophets. Lord, let prophecy come flowing back into the church. Let pastors welcome, welcome what you have to say, the instructions of how to judge and how to receive. Let it not be a fearsome thing to never do, but Lord, you would speak many things to us through prophetic ways. So Lord, we are asking, please stir up your people, stir up all the gifts, of the Holy Spirit, stir up the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Cause many of your sons and daughters, Lord, to, to see in your word that your word says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, builds himself up. I need to be built up, Lord. Quiero so maradiado, so yere kuhurra baia maradiandas. Paha barakieta sapakieto to monakieto koyoro do robada diana. I desire, Lord, to speak mysteries unto you. I desire, Lord, prophecy. Like you said in 1 Corinthians 14, desire prophecy above everything else. Precious God, let your Church, rise up now like an army, an army of warriors praying, an army repenting, truly repenting of our sins, repenting for this nation and, re and for the world, interceding. You are interceding for us, Jesus. Let us join you. Father God, I rejoice as I see September rolling along now. And Lord, I want to hold up Saturday the 26th, the great gathering of all that you are calling onto our nation's capital, onto the mall, onto the grass, the ground, knees, faces hitting the ground repenting before you like you call always your people to the capital, Jerusalem. Let us be called, Lord. Let those who can't come be called in their own homes to pray, to gather together with others, to make an effort at it. Let the march be glorious and protected by angels. Protect Franklin Graham. Protect Jonathan Kahn and all of those in leadership, sending a call out to the nation to set this day aside. Father God, we'd ask that you would heal many today. I'd ask, Lord, that you would continue to heal my little sister, Brenda, in Kenya, 
And now that the eye operation is over, Lord, we need your help to cause the eyelid to return to open on its own, to strengthen all those muscles and everything that causes us to open up our eye. Lord, we pray and lift her up. Lord, I'd ask you to hear all those who are lifting up, children, parents, teachers, schools, the government, relatives, friends. Lord, hear us during this time of prayer and intercession and thankfulness, thankfulness. We welcome your forgiveness, Lord. We welcome to be washed clean by your blood that we might walk in the relief and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Love you all so very much. Have a great day.